In today's video, we're going to be going through my seven top tips for storing my car during the winter. For some people, owning an MGF or a TF is just a little bit of summer fun. And when it gets around to autumn, you start thinking about what you're going to do with your car during those winter months. Some people might look at selling the car, others are going to put their car in storage until the spring when they can get the car back out of the garage and get out and enjoy that sunny weather. Now to help with the process of remembering what you need to do when you put your car into storage, I thought of a really handy acronym and that's SHELTER. So on today's video, I'm going to run through my seven top tips for keeping your car stored during those winter months. And we're going to start with a letter S. So when you fold your soft top down, usually it's literally just a case of undoing the catches and folding it back. But what I'd recommend when you're storing your car for longer periods of time and you're going to have your soft top down and your hard top on is folding the plastic rear screen down as well and making sure that's laid flat. And the reason for that is if you can make sure that the screen's flat and it's not bent, you're going to reduce the likelihood of the... Um, the, the plastic cracking um, during those winter months when the plastic gets that bit harder and it gets can get a little bit more brittle. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to unzip the um, screen, fold it flat, and then fold the soft top back. With the rear screen laid flat, we can now fold the roof back ready to put the hardtop on. The other thing to remember with soft tops is that they must be completely dry before you put your hardtop on, otherwise it's the perfect environment for growing mould. Next up is handbrakes. When you're storing your car, make sure your handbrake is turned off. The reason for that is over long periods of time when your handbrake's on, it can sometimes cause the brake pads to bind to the discs because your car's not being moved much. So if you're going to store your car, one thing that you can do to make sure the car doesn't move is put some chocks behind the wheels and leave your car in gear. Next up is the engine. So what you should be looking to do every one to two weeks is to start your engine and let it get up to temperature. Now what, the reason for doing that is to make sure that the battery doesn't go flat um, whilst you're not using the car. Obviously if you've got a trickle charger then that will be less of an issue. Ideally being able to take the car out for a 15 minute drive is the, the best thing to do um, but for those of you that might have got your car on a sawn then just leaving your car for 15 minutes let it get up to temperature should be enough. The other thing to think about is the petrol. So what I tend to do is um, fill the tank right up to the top. Now what that will do is gives the less space in your petrol tank for condensation to build up uh, which might cause problems um, with your petrol tank. The other thing that you can do to protect the fuel tank and the fuel lines is add a fuel additive as well. Next up is the letter L and for L we're thinking about location. When it comes to storing a car you've got to work with the space that you've got. For some of you that will mean that you're able to store your car in a garage like this. For others it'll mean having to store your car outside and that might be on a driveway or on the road. Depending on whether you're storing your car inside or outside, here's a few extra things for you to think about. Whether you're storing your car inside or outside, it's a really good idea to put a couple of dehumidifier bags in the car. I tend to put one in each footwell. If you're storing the car inside, leave a window open to stop condensation building up inside the car. A battery naturally discharges over time. If you're storing your car outside, one solution is to use a battery isolation switch. Alternatively, if you're storing your car inside, you might want to use a trickle charger instead. If you're going to store your car outside, you might want to consider putting a car cover over it. Although, using a car cover isn't for everyone, especially those with garage and pristine paintwork, 
but if you're more bothered about preventing water getting in through the seals on your car, this is probably something worth thinking about. Before you put a car cover on, make sure your car is clean and the paint is free from contaminants to reduce the risk of scratches to the paintwork. The car cover should also be breathable to prevent moisture retention and either tailored to fit your car or elasticated to fit snugly. This car cover is specifically made to fit the MGTF and can be purchased from UK Custom Covers. I'll pop a link in the description below where you can find it. Tires. When you're storing your car make sure that the tire pressures are just right. So for mine that's 1.8 bar at the front and 1.9 bar at the back. There's different tire pressures depending on which size rims you've got. These are 15 inch, so there's a different one for the 16 inch. And I'll pop in the description down below the different tire pressures that you'll need. If you're storing your car for even longer periods of time, the one thing that you can look at doing is taking the tires off altogether and putting the car on jack stands. What that will stop is the tires from ending up with any flat spots on the bottom of them. Mice and rats have a taste for insulation and air filters. I'd recommend blocking entry points such as the exhaust pipe with an old microfiber cloth or steel wool and close all air vents. You don't want to find any unwelcome guests in your car in spring. So the final thing for us to think about is rust. Now rust is the enemy of any car owner, not just MGF and TF owners. And what I like to do before I store the car for long periods of time is treat any rust, particularly if you've got some damp weather coming up. And the first thing I'll do is go and take a look around the car, identify any areas that have got any rust, and then what I'll do is go around and grind that rust back to bare metal, treat it with hammerite cure rust, and what this does is it will convert any rust that is there um, into well non-rust, um, and once you've done that, you then can paint straight on top of this. I'll actually pop a link in the description below where you can get this from and what, what, what this stuff's called. Um, once you've done that, you can then go on and put a etch primer on top of your bare metal, followed by a color coat which is matched to the color of your car. Now for me that is Starlight Silver and the code's MBB. Again, I'll pop a link in the description below where you can get these from. Um, and top it off with a nice uh, clear coat to protect your color coat that you just sprayed on. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, I'll see you soon.